Hey, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a really cool abandoned airport that I discovered in Riga, Latvia, one of my recent trips there to Latvia. I say I found it, but actually I hired a local tour guide and I said, hey, show me some things that typical tourists don't get to see. And he gave me a list of options and this was one of those options. And of course, I couldn't pass up on, on this. So I'm going to show you the footage. I'm going to talk through as we progress through the building, show you what we saw there. If you want to look up the history of this airport, I really recommend you do so. It's been destroyed and rebuilt twice. It was heavily used in World War II. Actually, its history goes all the way back to World War I. But it did have some German and Soviet occupation activity there and just has a rich culture and history. And you'll see that from some of the architecture and some of the designs that we're going to see as we do a walk through here. So with that, let's take a look at the actual building. All right, so we're approaching the building and my tour guide was a little bit nervous at this point and he's saying, hey, be careful. Let me know if you see the caretaker or any security guards because apparently those people sometimes come out and turn away people that want to come and take a look. We didn't see anybody outside. We saw some cars there in the back and that kind of got us a little bit nervous, so we slowly approached the building because it's not really open to tourists, right? There's no big open sign or welcome sign, and I don't think they want people just walking through here. And so we had to be a little bit careful that we didn't get turned away. You can see the airfield out back there. There's about 50 acres, it looks like, uh, of, of well, that, that's listed there as actual airspace. So we were looking for a door to get in here and we were looking around to see if there was any people that we were going to run into. We only saw maintenance people inside the building and they were very friendly to us. Now we're actually inside the main area. This is kind of the main lobby and this must have been when it was in use, uh, the main kind of area that people would come into. Those wings are actually very meaningful. They were, uh, I'm surprised they're still there and not in some museum. Uh, they were actually listed in a lot of the photos and some of the photos are actually in this building. In the background there you can see the big mural on the wall there. Uh, really cool and in really good shape as well. And then you can also see some of the artwork on the ceiling a little bit in the main area. It's very kind of baby blue colors with these little white flowers. Very cool design. And then of course those marble pillars are just phenomenal. Those are not fake marble or anything like that that you might see in some places. Those are solid marble. And you could just kind of feel the weight of them if you put your hand up against it. It's pretty significant. Everything there was pretty heavy duty. You could see the stairs, the big tiles on the floor. Everything was very substantial and, and well built. And I think that's why it's still in fairly good shape for having no maintenance. You can see the stairs are a little bit chipped there, of course, right? But nobody's looking after this place, really, and it's just been sitting there basically since World War II with very little usage. Apparently, they do raves and parties and stuff, private parties in there right now. Uh, not very many, of course, but it would be a great location for that. Right now, we're exploring the hallway and the offices and just kind of taking a look to see what doors are open. And uh, you can see the very traditional floor design there. That's that kind of wooden pattern that you see throughout the Baltics. Um, I've seen it in, uh, in Poland, Latvia, uh, as well as even Austria. There's an office that's open. And uh, I think we're going to go in there and take a look at uh, what they've got going on there. So some modern furniture that they've dumped in there. There was a box, you know, it's pretty broken up in there for sure. We weren't too sure of the footing. And there's a box actually to my right with some old vodka bottles in there that we discovered. <coughs> now we're taking a look at where else we can go. A lot of little offices there. This floor is pretty solid, so we weren't too worried about that. And uh, that door's locked, so we're going to go and explore elsewhere. Some of these uh, offices have more modern doors and locks on them, of course, just to keep people out of certain areas. But for the most part, you can walk around and explore. Back in the main area there, and there's that beautiful floor design there. So that's a really nice hardwood floor. All separate little pieces there, all those kind of diagonal shapes. 
you can see the wall starting to fall apart there. You, there's definitely big areas that are uh, in worse state than others. You got to be careful where you walk. This main area was pretty safe. You can see as you get close to the walls, it starts to get a little bit less safe. Uh, but this main area here, I think that they must have done a little bit of maintenance at least to keep it in the state that it was in because we're going to show you in a minute some other areas that were definitely not as good and we were a little bit worried uh, about our footing as we progressed through those areas. But look at the artwork of those of the staircase and the support beams there, that beautiful design. It's pretty amazing. You can imagine back in the day that this must have been such a cool place and just uh, just beautiful to walk into. Back in the main lobby and we're gonna go take a look at another little area. There's a, the painting with those wings. That's what it must have looked like back in the day. Pretty amazing. So we found another area where we want to go explore, but there's no power, there's no lighting. So we're, we're trying to figure out if we actually want to go up there or not. And I, I said to him, hey, it's up to you if you want to go. And we're using our iPhones as lighting to explore this area. But you can see this area, it's kind of falling apart a little bit more but uh, we're gonna go and explore it anyway. I think what we're looking for right here is the control tower, and so we're just trying to find our way up to that, because that would be the highest point. You can see that at the very top of the building when you're outside of the building. So now we've moved up a level. <coughs> oh, here's a room that's pretty, pretty worse for wear. You can see the walls are starting to fall apart. Nice view of the outside area there. Some really nice wallpaper that's that's done well over time. That may have been newer than the rest of it, but actually I don't think so because you can see it's starting to peel away there. So we're going to go explore some other places. You can see just all the walls, all the doors are just slowly starting to cave in. The floor here is in pretty good shape, so we weren't too worried, but Oh, you can see here, like we didn't want to spend time in that room because it's starting to fall apart. We saw in some of the barracks in another property, the floor had totally caved in. So we were thinking about that as we we're walking through here. Now it looks like somebody I was actually living in this room. You can see the posters on the wall. Somebody was trying to make it kind of feel like home, it looks like. Uh, no other, no other uh, personal items or anything like that. But yeah, this is that room. It's It's not doing well. You can see that there's uh yeah, look at the ceiling there. That's all caved in, probably water damage, and then the ceiling just popped off. So not very sound or, or safe. But some of the other rooms, you know, they look not too bad, all things considered. But uh, definitely overall it needs uh, quite a bit of maintenance. Now we're you can see that roof there, the ceiling and the chandelier, just beautiful, right? It's definitely Needs a bit of work, but in, uh, still has all the elements of beauty that it, hints of beauty that uh, it used to have. There's the airfield there you can see where planes land. Small planes still are using the runway there. Private, private planes it looks like. But uh, just exploring that second level there now. <coughs> Another view up from the second floor over that okay. mural in the main area. And now we found the entrance to the main tower, the control tower. This was a little dicey going up this ladder. Steel ladder, it was wiggling, it wasn't very well secured. But now we get into that main control tower. Great view of the runway. You can see that there's just a huge amount of land out there, very flat, about 50 acres, and that's where they would have landed some of the planes. So you can imagine back in the day when uh, the Soviets moved in here, they had they took over this whole area with six tanks back in World War II, and uh, they, they ran it for a while, but pretty uh, amazing. Didn't see any bullet holes in the building at all, but so I don't think there was a lot of live fighting there's the, the little hatch that you have to go down to get out of the control center. So it's not super high tech, no escalator or elevator or anything like that. 
And I'm holding the camera in one hand, trying to trying to not fall down the ladder with the other. So I'm moving a little bit slow, but yeah, you could definitely feel the uh, the culture and the history of this place. So now we're just trying to get out of there without putting our foot through the floor. Just using our phones as lights. That area there actually goes out over the main area and uh, it's just a few wooden planks between the beams. We were thinking about going out there, but then we realized that if we stepped in the wrong place, we'd probably fall through the ceiling into the main lobby area, which is about, oh, maybe a 10 or 15 meter drop. And we didn't want to do that. So we continued to explore through here, back down the way we came. But uh, a lot of offices, there's probably, must be, oh, 30 to 50 little offices in that building. Nobody there now, of course. And then we're walking back down. So no lighting in that area. We've been being real careful where we were stepping. Because you never know what you're going to step into there. There wasn't a lot of nails or anything like that. So we weren't worried about that. We were just worried about actually falling through the floor. Down on the main level, now we're pretty safe because it's all cement. You're basically at ground level. So all you're worried about now is the uh, ceiling caving in, right? But, but it was pretty good, pretty structurally sound in this main area. And now we're back in this beautiful area. And now we've gone outside. We're taking a final look at the building. That's where we were at the very top, that control tower there. Well, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed that quick tour of the abandoned airport in Riga, Latvia. If you're interested in airports or aviation and specifically that site there and the rich history and culture behind it, I'll put a link down below to the website that describes all of that and gives you updates and pictures on what's going on there now. So really cool site. If you're in Riga, Latvia, I highly recommend you drop by, perhaps hire a local to show you the site and the many other special areas in the region. Because for me, it was just uh, very cool, very special to see that. I could really imagine the, uh, the history behind it. So with that, thanks a lot and uh, happy trails.